it is the time of year for traditions, and therefore, I think it's fitting that we head out into the Hunter Classic for one of our longest standing traditions on this channel, an opening day of Firearms Season's Whitetail Hunt. Now there are a couple of new additions, as you can see we had the fluorescent orange, that is not something we've ever incorporated in the past, and of course we do have our 7mm Adi, that is the caliber I use in real life. However, last year I think I had the 5.5 to 22 power scope. In real life I have a 4 to 12 power, so this 2 to 10 is as close as I could get. And much like the Tennessee muzzleloader hunt a couple of weeks ago, I went with as similar equipment to what I use in real life as was possible. So no range finding binos, no spotting scope, just the regular binos and the range finder. Now I don't think it's feasible to do a video without using the collars, so we do still have those, but I'm planning on just focusing on whitetail. And it would appear as if the buck that grunted is 85 to 100 kg. Oddly enough, that is exactly what happened in last year's video. We had a max weight track to start with. So, potentially a good start, but we gotta find him. Not the easiest track, but a pretty good buck at 165 to 185. And funny enough, all the references to last year's video, I wanna say the same estimate as the biggest buck in last year's video. And I referenced that so much because I went back and looked just to kinda see, and it turned out the biggest buck in that video was 170.3. Not that I expect this to happen again, but the buck that I shot last year in real life was 171 and 38. So if we could continue with that trend and have one just a little bit bigger than in the video, that would be a pretty good deal. But I don't know, I think this guy's a 7x7, seven seven, so I'm predicting right around 170 again. Double long limit, 44 meters, 175 actually. All right, already doing better than last year, so we'll take a trophy shot of that. And I think this will do for a pretty good trophy shot. It kind of highlights the fluorescent orange sort of addition to this year's opening day of Rival Season Whitetail Hunt. And we'll head off. Now, I wanted to address as well that we are on Red Feather, because in the past we've typically done Whiteheart Island. Now, we did do Red Feather last year, and I ended up liking that idea because no map in the Hunter Classic is a perfect simulation of where I hunt here in Pennsylvania. And the nice thing about Red Feather is it does give you the potential to find a lot of whitetail as well as it's not Whiteheart Island. Not that I dislike Whiteheart, but I at least intend to do a Thanksgiving hunt on Whiteheart for some turkeys. I'm actually recording this first as sort of preparation for rifle season, so we'll see if that actually pans out, but that's mostly the reason that we're out here on this map today. We'll talk about going to the other end of the spectrum, 35 to 60 for our second buck. And I think once again, we'll try not to go prone with this. For those of you that are not familiar with the 7mm Mod 8 in Hunter Classic, one of the, I guess you could call it features of it, is when you use it while prone, you're forced to use the bipod, which is nice in certain circumstances, but basically if you're not on flat ground, it tends to be more of a hindrance than an actual benefit. But regardless, when the deer are that close, we really don't need it, so our second buck is going to be approximately 120 inches smaller than our first, but at least another deer down as we continue forward, and we will try at least to kind of continue along the lines of keeping things fairly realistic as far as like shot placement and stuff like that, but because we are using the collars, we're going to naturally have deer walking towards us, so we will be taking quite a few frontal angle shots that maybe wouldn't be as feasible to just take in real life without a lot more consideration. We're just moving in the wrong direction, 40 to 65 on this guy, and you know it's not that big when we just walk up on it. Not even like crouching around, no grunt call from him, nothing. Just walked up over the hill and he is right there, but now our second and third bucks combined to be maybe half of what the first one was. At least we're fairly decent on the shots thus far, 59 score for him, and I think that at least did use up the last of the rounds in that pack, so we'll have a fresh pack of 10 for the rest of the hunt. And for the first time today, we may have an opportunity for a long shot and actually a bit of a legitimate reason to use the rangefinder. According to that, it's around 216, I, I think we're actually ranging the proper area, so we shouldn't need to aim high. We may be able to make use of the bipod, sort of. If we could find like a gap in the grass, this is about as well as we're gonna do. Kind of crooked, but actually dropped him out there at that range. Not too bad. We really kind of avoid using the bipod as much as possible these days, but 
in that case, I really would say it worked out. And I did want to mention it all because there are two variations of this rifle. There's the scout version, which is what we have, and the elite version. As far as I know, outside of the color, the only difference is magazine size. The elite version has a 10 round capacity, which is kind of absurd. This one's a five round capacity and a lot closer to what I'd use in real life. So that and the fact that I guess a green is closer to the camouflage than mine is. So that kind of just fits as well. But I'm liking that we're starting to run into some more bucks and I'm kind of considering as well we may shoot a couple of does just to really fit with the theme. Those of you that are frequenting the live streams and stuff probably have heard the woes of the season thus far and the fact that the only deer I shot has been out of state. So I certainly intend to maybe try to fill some doe tags early on in rifle season. And if we're talking about doing realism, that's probably the most realistic thing we could do. As for this buck though, I can almost guarantee it's going to be the farthest shot of our I guess series to call it that for the opening day of rifle it was a 270 meter intestine shot oddly enough and a 132 score not exactly a score you see often from whitetail that size so kind of cool to get something a little bit different and that shows the power of this gun I mean having that high power ammo there's two different ammo types high power and high velocity both are ethical for whitetail but in that instance you see what the high power can do you know, I do have to say, at the hour and 45 minute mark, this hunt has been anything but standard. This is only our fifth buck, so in that way, it's kind of felt like a slow hunt, but then on the other hand, literally the first thing we shot was a 175 scoring whitetail, which any whitetail hunt in which we can top 170, 175 is a success in my opinion, so it also feels like we're having a really good hunt. So. I'm not even sure how to kind of quantify this so far, but what I will say is we have, as we have our fifth buck here, heart shot at 39 meters and a 119 score. We have, of course, not done that many rifle only hunts other than the muzzleloader hunt, which we did that on Settler Creeks, I think, and ended up with a 140 scoring buck. Typically we hunt with a bow, and I think that's part of why we haven't seen as many bucks thus far. Naturally, we're just going to spook some with every single shot we take and the good news is again We've already gotten a good buck. So no complaints there But hopefully as we start to cover more ground later into this hunt we can start to stumble into more I'm Not real sure what this buck is doing, but I guess we'll try to get it Almost a, a good representation of PA rifle season, but trying to time this shot just right may be a challenge Almost at it that time, I think. He's basically running the same path, so <laughs> the fact that we haven't hit it yet is probably not the best sign. Still got five rounds. There we go. A little far back, but ended up dropping him regardless. Kind of like earlier with the, was it 217 meter intestine shot that dropped him? Not the best. Down to, I think, four rounds for the remainder of our hunt, but I think that'll probably be just fine. I'd still love to know what it was doing. Either way, it sort of went into the category of starting to find them a little more quickly. Oh, we hit him twice. I never even saw him react to the first shot. Kind of explains maybe why Spine 2 and 3 insta dropped him, because typically that would just kind of be a, a shot that has them bent down, but 65 score, not sure that was worth all of the shots. And I mean, that kind of shows how often we hunt with this rifle. 50 harvest for the scout variation of this particular rifle. I don't know if this is the one that we've taken in the last couple of years. We may have had the Elite version at one of those videos, but that's, for the most part, about all we use it for these days. I'm gonna assume at 80 to 95 kg, that is probably the buck that we had tracks of. Had one up to 95 and was hoping for something a little bit better, but at least it was not a long track. Now, I did think... Down to the left, there was something that appeared to be a deer kind of walking down towards the water. And oddly enough, I don't see it fleeing up out of there. So could have been a doe, could have been a number of things really, but at least another opportunity for a broadside shot. The only ones I think that we've really had broadside shots on are the one that we walked up on and the two that have spooked. This guy had spooked before we found the track. By the way, I did just realize 
Both of the variants of this rifle were called the Scout. This is the Standard Edition versus the Elite Edition, not Scout versus Elite, just to clarify that, but right in the shoulder, right about where we'd want that. Oddly enough, somehow, lung, liver, and stomach, but a 114 score, and we'll continue our way on up through here. I think we're going to try to get up to, like, this tent. So, hopefully another buck or two on our way, and like I said, we'll shoot those if the opportunity arises. And I would say, rather fitting, that we're wrapping up with a buck out of a tree stand here, and he's a max red estimate deer, 90 to 100 kg, only up to 135 score, but that will be, I think, an opportunity for our 8th buck of the hunt, 7th or 8th, if we are counting correctly, should be a hard shot there, will be number 8. I think everything we shot today was a buck, but... By the time this video is out, the story of the first day of rifle season here in PA will already have pretty much been entirely written. I think there's going to be like 16 minutes of shooting light left or something when this video drops, so we'll see where we're at. But I was thinking as we sat in the tree stand calling to see if anything would come in, if there is a positive spin on things, in PA you only get one buck tag. And the first buck we shot of this hunt was that 175, so hopefully that's a good sign. But... It's always fun to come out here and just kind of get hyped up for rifle season. It's been one of my absolute favorite kind of traditions that we've been doing for all these years now. And who knows, last year's ended up boating well. We shot a buck like this in that video and I mentioned if I get one this big in real life, I'd be stoked. And that remains to be the case. But based on what happens last year, you never know what is going to end up this year. 120.6 for that guy. And I think on that note... That is probably going to do it for this video, so for those of you that have been hunting throughout the year, for those of you who are in PA or another state whose season starts today, best of luck to you, and best of luck going forward, as again, it is probably just about dark, and uh, yeah, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time.